Welcome back for another Weekend Jewelry School. I'm Melissa Muir. Last week we talked about bench blocks and anvils and anything that you might need like that. This week we're going to talk about what to use with those, which are your hammers. If anybody has ever seen my studio, they know I love hammers. I have a whole wall of hammers. And then here you can see in this photo, this is how I like to store my hammers. One, it's a work of beauty because <laughs> they're hammers. And two, it makes it so that they are very easy to access and I can easily see what hammer is what. I kind of have them stored in a particular sequence. And so it's very easy for me to find the hammer that I need for the job that I'm working on. Now you guys will figure out what kind of storage works best for you and do a quick Google search and you guys will find tons of different hammer storage uh, solutions for everybody. So what works best for me may not work best for you, but I'm sure you'll figure out what works well for you in the meantime. So for now, let's talk about a couple of different hammers. Now, this video could go on and on and on and on, and I want this to just be a really, really brief review or kind of an introductory to the hammers. So in this video, instead of going on and explaining all the different hammers, I figured I would show you a few basic ones that you may want to consider if you are just starting out, maybe buying your first, second, or third hammer. What do I consider essential? And really, there's about four different hammers that I would consider essential. So let's take a look at those now. So here you can see I've got a number of things. One, obviously I've got a bench block and something that I'm gonna demonstrate. But the first thing that you want is a good planishing hammer. Now, planishing hammers are all very similar. They're going to have two round faces to them and each face or each side is going to be a little bit different. So the one side is more flat, the second side has a little bit of a curve. A good planishing hammer is also going to have a rounded edge right here. Now you can buy economy hammers that are planishing hammers and you can take care of this yourself with maybe some files or sandpaper or whatever else and then you want to take your faces back up to a nice high polish. The dome is going to do a couple of different things. One, it is going to allow you to spread your metal and two, it's also going to give you a texture. If I don't want to spread my metal, but I want to kind of maybe flatten something, then I'm going to use this flat face more often. Now you can see here, two of my handles look very similar, and that is because they are both made by Bill Fretz and his company, Fretz Hammers. The other one that I have is my very first planishing hammer, which is a petting house. Petting house is a very long known company for their hammers. They are made in Germany fantastic hammers but you can choose you know and like you can see here my petting house has a much larger head on it it's thicker so I've got a little broader face it doesn't really matter as long as you've got a good planishing hammer you're going to be good now to give you an idea of how this works one I'm gonna just take this rounded edge right here and just show you a little bit on this metal what you get with that So I just briefly went over this and you can kind of see the little dimples that are there now from this. So we get that beautiful hammered texture that some people really like. Now what's happening is as your hammer strikes the metal on and it's striking between two pieces of steel, one your hammer head and one your steel block, what's happening is it's actually stretching this out. So I didn't do a whole lot yet, but if I were to continue to hammer like this, you would actually see my metal stretch. Now we'll see this happen a little bit more clearly on a piece of wire. So what I'm going to do is just kind of hold my fingers off here to the side so that I don't hit my fingers. I'm going to again use that rounded edge and I'm going to strike this a few times. Now obviously the more I go, the bigger this is going to get, but now you can see that we've kind of stretched both outways and we've elongated. And that is because when you strike with any kind of a hammerhead that is rounded like that, that has that little bit of a dome, it's going to stretch the metal in all directions. So a planishing hammer is your number one hammer that you want to get. Uh, that's is really, you cannot spend your money wrong on a good planishing hammer. 
The next hammer that I want to get, I want to have something with a cross peen. So I have a couple of different hammers here. These are both goldsmith hammers. You can see one's a little larger. These are both made by uh, Bill Fretz, but the one with the black handle is actually made for Alan Revere and the Revere Academy. So you'll see there's the Revere hammer here. And this one just has a little different handle. It has more of a texture that Alan really liked so that you can really grip onto your hammer. It doesn't slip around as much. We have a rounded face and then we've got a curved cross peen here. Whereas our goldsmith hammer has a flat face and the cross peen, while it is curved ever so slightly, not much, it's also much thinner. The cross peens are good, so this is a, a square faced riveting hammer. And then we also have some raising hammers. And you'll see here on the raising hammers, the faces on these are much thicker than what's on a normal cross peen. So you have a few different options on that. And again, with each of these hammers, both sides are a little bit different, so you kind of get two for the, the price of one on this. The cross peen is really nice because what's going to happen, you saw that when we, we hammered with a round hammer, everything spread out uh, away from the center of that. Whereas when we have a cross peen, the metal is going to stretch in front and behind where it strikes here with this. So let me show you guys this real fast. So if we look now, you will see that on this side, it kind of spread both ways. And on this side, it, all it did was elongate. It also textured. So that is something that you want to kind of keep in mind when you're choosing that kind of a hammer. Now the last two that I would highly suggest that you have is a brass hammer or mallet or and a nylon. Now what's going to be the purpose of this one is this is going to be the one that you strike your tools with. So this is going to be for like punches uh, in a disc cutter, your stamps, things like that. And what happens is it allows you to deface or kind of spread the, the hammer face on the brass hammer rather than on your tools yourself. If you use a steel hammer on your steel tool you're going to notice that the heads of your tools begin to mushroom and that's something that you want to avoid. The nylon hammer is going to be really good for flattening things, to harden things. So if I have to harden an ear wire, I'm going to reach for my nylon mallet. If my metal happens to be a little bit bumpy or wavy, then I'm going to use that nylon mallet to kind of straighten all of that out. So there you have it. Really quick in a nutshell, I have four hammers that I really consider a must. One, your planishing hammer. Two, something with a cross peen, whether that's a goldsmith hammer or a riveting hammer. Um, you get one of the narrow raising or wide raising hammers. You want to be able to have that ability to kind of stretch your metal that way. And then I also suggest that you have a good brass hammer, one, two pounds. It's up to you. And then also a nylon hammer. As always, I will include links to my favorite hammers down in the description, including more than what I'm showing here. And we'll do some more follow-ups with hammers because again, there are a lot of hammers. We haven't even begun to scratch the surface. We haven't even talked about texturing yet, but I guarantee that is something that is on the docket for one of our next classes. So as always, if you like the video, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe and ring that bell so that you make sure that you don't miss any of the new videos coming out. I will see you guys next week for Tool Time Tuesday and again next weekend for Weekend Jewelry School. Have a great weekend everyone and I'll see you guys next time. Mm -hmm.